Hey everyone, it's me, Bert. I'm back with my newest video. And, oh, hey, hey, waiter, uh, waiter. Yes, sir? Um, I was just wondering if you could, uh, just get me, uh, like a grape soda and some chocolate donuts right away, sir. All right, anyways, uh, this week on Home Skill Customs, we're going to go over every single character who appears in Jabba's Palace. Your grape soda, sir. Oh, why, why, thank you. Thank you I very much. I do regret to inform you, sir, that we are all out of chocolate donuts. However, if you follow me, I will take you to our VIP section. Ooh, I didn't know you had a VIP section. Wow, I got the best seat in the house. Well, anyways, before I start this video, let me remind you that uh, I'm only going over characters that are seen in the original 1983 theatrical release of Return of the Jedi. So none of the special edition characters will be mentioned here. But I do plan on doing that in a future video, so stay tuned for that. But anyways, uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy every character and action figure in Jabba's Palace. First we have R2-D2 and C-3PO. For R2-D2, I use the Force Link 2 Toys R Us exclusive R2-D2. C-3PO, I use the C-3PO on the left, who is available in the Saga Collection, Ewok Throne C-3PO. He was also seen in Movie Heroes, and then again in the Saga Legends. Until he gets green stuff on him, and then I use the C-3PO from the 30th Anniversary Salacious Crumb with C-3PO pack. They encounter the Gatekeeper droid TT-8L. No figure for him. Then we see the Bomar Monk crawling on its uh, six legs behind C-3PO, and that is a Power of the Force 2 Malaway figure. After that, we see the Gamrian Guards, as R2-D2 literally bumps into one of them. And uh, for a Gamrian Guard, you've got to use the Vintage Collection Gamrian Guard or the Black Series Rancor Pit Gamrian Guard. They're just about identical. Then we see Bib Fortuna. For Bib Fortuna, I use the Saga Collection Bib Fortuna, or sometimes I use the Return of the Jedi figurine playset Bib Fortuna from the Disney Store. Then after that, we see, of course, Jabba the Hutt. The best Jabba the Hutt available is from the Jabba's Rancor Pit Black Series Toys R Us exclusive set. Then we have Ula, who is available in the Legacy Collection Jabba's Throne playset. That's also where you'd get the, the dais for Jabba. Behind Jabba is the Jawa Heret, and uh, he's then joined by two other Jawas that are out on the floor. And uh, for these Jawas, I use the Black Series number 20 or the Legacy Build Droid number 39. But none of the Jawas is, is perfectly designed to be the Jawas in Jabba's palace. And we see two characters talking behind Jabba. The one on the left is Nizak Beck. Some people confuse him for Weeba Weeba, but that's the guy who wears the same outfit in the, the dungeon below by the Rancor Pit. And the other guy, they, they confuse him with is Velkin Taziri, but he's only seen on the Sand Skiff. The guy on the right looks as though he could be Fozek, but I really believe he's this other character who I made up a name for, and I call him Rayleigh Thal. After that, we see C-3PO enter, and uh, he encounters Bubo. Bubo is available in the Saga Collection Jabba's Palace Denizens set. Also hanging out in this shot is Selt Murray, who was found in Vintage Collection number 132. And there is Jaquil, who was found in the Saga Collection Phase 3. Then there is Rees, who you could get in the Black Series or Vintage Collection 137 from the Jabba's Palace playset. After that, you see Yarna Del Gargan, and she was available as Legacy Collection Build Droid number six and then there's she's talking to a character who I've named Relum Turb who is not available as an action figure then we see holographic Luke who is available in the saga collection I'm hoping they make a six inch black series version of him at some point because if you look he's he's almost twice as tall as our hero C-3PO and we have Beto and Revajasa Two Rodians, um, you could probably use Greedo the, from the Saga Legends set or Vintage Original Trilogy Collection Greedo, but uh, please note, Greedo does have a different vest. Then we have Garen Nastal, a Soren character, no figure for him. And then we see a woman named Jess, no figure for her either. Then we have a black shadowy shape behind Ula, 
And that actually is none other than Vizam. He's found black as Black Series number 17 or Vintage Collection number 153. Then we see Salacious Crumb, who's available as in the 30th Anniversary Collection with C-3PO, or you can get him in the Jabba's Throne Legacy Collection pack. Then we see the Klatween Patty Frog, who actually they did make as a Saga Collection Ultra Jabba's Palace figure with the Jabba the Hut set. Then we have the the Squid Face character Tessic, who's in who was available in the Power of the Jedi line, and then we have of course Boba Fett, the best Boba Fett. Now it used to be the Vintage Original Trilogy Collection Boba Fett, but it is now the new Vintage Collection Return of the Jedi style Boba Fett, which is coming out in spring of 2021. Then we have Woof, and he is Vintage Collection number 24, and we have a Manaman who came out in the Power of the Jedi line. And Hermie Odal is visible in this shot, 30th Anniversary Collection number 29. And that directs our attention to Han Solo and Carbonite, available in the Jabba's Palace Adventure set uh, with Han Solo as Vintage Collection number 136. That's the best version. If you'd like one that's partially thawed and turning red, you could get the Han Solo from the Saga Collection, or you could get the fully thawed version from the Jabba's Palace fold-out diorama set. Then we see Mosa Binid, who does not have a figure, at least not in this outfit. Then we see some rats, a grasping hand, and a tentacle. No official figures for any of those. In the droid torture room, we see the droid 8D8. He was available in the Power of the Force 2 collection, and he is torturing a, junk, a gonk droid. The closest thing to the color of that gonk droid is the Power of the Force 2 gonk droid from the Jawa and gonk droid set. And then there is EV-99, the boss of the torture chamber. He was available in the Power of the Force 2. And then there is a 2-1-B style droid being tortured. Now, they've never made this exact figure, uh, but the 30th anniversary collection number 6 2-1-B droid is pretty close. However, I refuse to believe that it, his legs look like that. So I go with my Power of the Force 2 2-1-B droid. Then uh, there's many... R2 units, astromech droids in the background scattered around the floor. This is a great place to use any extra droid parts you have from some of the Build-A-Droid sets. Or you could get the uh, Walmart Droid Factory R2-D2 with Luke Skywalker pack. And uh, I love the, the battle damage look of that R2-D2. He fits pretty nicely there. Then we see a CZ droid for the um, this is one of two. There's one here and then there's one at the end of the Jabba's Palace scene. For this one hanging on the wall, I actually use the 30th Anniversary Collection CZ4 droid because he can be taken apart. If you pull really hard at the waist, his torso comes right off. For the one that's upstairs later on, I use the Droid Factory, Disney Droid Factory CZ droid. Then we're brought back up to the throne room where we see the Max Rebo Band. We are going to stick with the original theatrical release of Return of the Jedi, so we're not going to use this size noodles. We're going to use the vintage 1983 Kenner size noodles. It's the closest thing we have to how she looked in the original trilogy. Then we see Droopy McCool. He was available in the band, Max Rebo Band Pairs set and the Max Rebo Band Jabba's Palace Musicians set. And the same is true for Max Rebo himself. Then we see two characters who are admittedly more visible in the special edition, but were also glimpsed in the original 1983 theatrical release. One is Murtok Yine, and one didn't have a name, so I'm calling her Ren Zimloff. Murtok can be seen right behind Max Rebo, as we initially see him, and Ren Zimloff is right behind Sai Snoodles. Ren can also be seen sleeping as Boosh sneaks through Jabba's palace at night. Then we see Lando Calrissian. He was Vintage Collection 144, is a little bit better than the shorter Sandstorm Lando Carissian that was available earlier. In the shadows we get our first glimpse of Bosk. He's available in the Vintage Original Trilogy Collection, or you can get him in the Saga Legends, or you can get him in the Vintage Imperial Forces set. Then we see Nysad. He's known as Nikto Gunner in the Hasbro world, and he was Build-A-Droid 23 in the Legacy Collection. Then after that, on the other side of Boba Fett is Arden Vapor Krell. No figure for him yet. Then we see another guy looming behind Jabba the Hutt, and that man is Rennick. Again, no figure. Then we see the long-necked 
two-headed monster Kane Addis behind Yarna while she's dancing. He's also visible behind a Gamrian guard when they take Chewbacca down to the dungeons and visible again when Princess Leia is found out by Jabba's henchmen. This is when I believe we first see Fozek for the first time is during this dancing scene. Unfortunately, no figure for Fozek yet. And we see La Dika, a woman all in red in the palace. Then we see Tannis Spyjack. He was available in the Saga collection. Then we see the Snaggletooth character Gizum. Never had a figure of Gizum yet. We see the Yuzum character Wham Lufba. And after that is Tame Dren Garen. Now he might actually be played by a different actor than the one who played him on the sail barge, but I, I imagine they're the same character still. You see Dangar, he actually kicked off the Vintage Collection as Vintage Collection number one. He's also available in the Imperial Forces set. But in Jabba's palace, he doesn't wear his backpack. He actually just has bare armor on his back, um, which you can only really get with the Power of the Force figure, but he really doesn't hold up against our modern figure, so I would still use the Vintage Collection one. We see the droid BGJ38. He was available in 2010 as part of the Build-A-Droid collection. You had to buy five super rare figures to get all the parts to make him, making him pretty rare. Then there's Voltazane. He does not have a figure yet. Then we see Palizio Rashad, no figure of him. Then we see Sergeant Duelin, who doesn't really have a figure either, actually. They made a figure of a character with his helmet named Brock Starsher in the Vintage Collection, and they made a Legacy Collection figure called Bane Malar, who has his body. So it is does make for a pretty easy custom. All you have to do is shave the neck part off of Bane Malar using a Dremel tool, and uh, you can easily fit Brock Starsher's head right on top. Then we see Princess Leia disguised as Boosh. If you are going to display her with the helmet on, you could just use the Black Series 3.75 inch figure. If you're going to take the helmet off though, you might want to get the Vintage Collection 134 figure because she has the photo real face. Then at last we have the mighty Chewbacca. Chewbacca has only been made with chains in the Saga Collection and he could really stand to have an update for articulation and for the fact he's not wearing his spiked collar in the Saga Collection figure. Then we have Shasa Teal, the Ishi Tib character. No figure for him, unfortunately. One of my favorites there. Then we have a character who has has not been named, but I made up the name Plin Croti. And uh, remember him, because he's going to show up again in a little bit. Then we have an Aqualish character sleeping on the ground. And remember him as well. Thulfane shows up next, also sleeping. Then I believe I found the elusive rock wart lying there on a pillow just as Boosh walks by. Um, a couple other people... I've seen on the, on the internet say that he might also be behind Bib Fortuna and Jess while they're sitting down. And of course we have Han Solo once he's free of the Carbonite. You have two options here. You can use the Saga Collection one, or you can use the Black Series slash Vintage Collection Han Solo. Uh, the Saga Collection has a more accurate shirt, but the, the Vintage Collection has a better face and articulation. So you have to decide there. Walking down the steps after Leia and Han get caught, is this guy in a red jumpsuit wearing bandoliers? I've named him Dranyam Trebor since he doesn't have a name or a figure at this point. Next we see Efontmon or Efontmon from the Saga Collection. Great figure there. Then we see Klaatu. He was available in Vintage Collection 134. One thing you should know about Klaatu is that his little skirt thing actually can spin around because in the palace he wears it in the front and on the sail barge he wears it in the back. Then we see Lojnella, or the Toadstool Terror. He's hiding behind Droopy McCool and uh, laughing at Han and Leia as they get caught. Then we have Luke Skywalker, Jedi Knight, Vintage Collection number 175. That works for just about every single s moment of this scene. Then we see Princess Leia. She's Legacy Collection Build-A-Droid number 17. That's the only way you can get the the molded legs that, that are kind of lying sideways like that. Then we see Yox get the Ugnaught. No figure for him yet. Then we see Pukamer Thriss. No figure for him yet either. Then we see Rake Rijard. No figure for him. Then we see the Rancor Monster. He was available in the 2009 Legacy Target exclusive set. And he was also available in the Toys R Us exclusive Jabba's Rancor Pit set. Then we see Garan. Build a droid number 21 in the Legacy Collection. And Malakili. Build a droid number 22 in the Legacy Collection. Then we see Gol, uh, the Wall Cobbasite, I believe that's his uh, species name, who's in the Jabba's Palace Court Denizens pack. We see three aliens, a Hanemth, 
a Duros and the Aquilish I mentioned earlier sleeping. And I believe they are all wearing costumes that humans had been wearing earlier in the film. First is the Henemth character. I've named him Ki Gran Onith, and I'm pretending like he's a relative of my Onith from the Cantina. Obviously played by the same guy who plays this sleeping character who I named Pr Plin Croti earlier in the film. We have the Aqualish who had no name. I'm naming him Glar Zaxa. And he's pretty obviously played by Pelizio Richard. They're both a little short and you can see they have the same uh, costume elements. And finally the Duros, most call uh, Leslomi Tsima, I believe to be played by none other than the same actor who played Arden Vapor Krell. If you look they have the same sort of bandolier and gray jumpsuit. That leaves just one more character who I've not actually spotted in Jabba's Palace, but I know he was there on set. A lot of people looked at his outfit and thought that he was perhaps a an Endor rebel soldier, but he's in fact visible in a couple behind the scenes images of Jabba's Palace. And uh, I'm not sure if he's actually in the film. Someone has suggested that this is him right next to Volta Zane, but I'm, I think maybe that's the character I call Relum Turb. It's hard to really make him out. Well, I've come to find out that the uh... VIP section of Jabba's Palace isn't all that it's cracked up to be, but I hope you uh, like and subscribe, and I hope to be back making more videos just like this one. See you then.